Right off the bat, um, the UI is not a lot different from version 3.5, but there are some nice uh, new things in version uh, 4 that you should be aware of. So the nice, the first thing is um, you're going to get a status um, uh, bar across where the archive is. So if you highlight any archive um, over on the left-hand side here, as you're doing that, you'll get a status, a most recent job status. So if you see a warning, for instance, with the A here, uh, that means that there was a, an issue with an archive job that just ran. Um, the most recent restore uh, job ran uh, successfully, so there's a green check mark. So this is a really nice, uh, quick way to kind of really check uh, uh, any kind of uh, status very quickly. If you take a look over at our Search Clips tab, um, this is new in 4.0, is the uh, ability for you to see whether a clip has been metadata tagged or has a preview. Um, so if you basically click on uh, these items here, you'll see that, um, and as you hover over this, it'll tell you um, exactly what these icons are for. But this is a great indicator right off the bat as well as to whether um, an item has additional metadata added to it or whether there's a proxy available. So as you click on any one of the clips in uh, this list here, in the search clips view, um, we'll bring up our newly um, enhanced um, uh, HTML5 player, as well as all of the um, uh, all of the additional metadata fields and information on the right hand side. So you notice that we've kind of shifted the uh, the player orientation from a vertical in version 3.0 to 3.5 back to more a horizontal uh, type of orientation, which we think works nicer. People can actually look at their content and see the metadata right next to it without having to scroll up and down. And uh, so this is a greatly enhanced uh, you know, feature. So, uh, so you can see your, your cue points or your clip notes, um, uh, you know, they're synonymous here. So you can jump back and forth. Um, I can add new clip cue points uh, anywhere along the way if I want to and um, enter a new piece of information. Maybe I want to call this, um, you know, best or whatever you want to do for adding a note. So uh, when I do that, um, we have to re-index so those won't show up right away, but um, we'll re-index those and those will be available to search against um, shortly. The other thing that's new in version 4.0 is um, we have area of interests uh, that we can actually um, identify. So you can mark in and mark out and create an area of interest and give that um, area of interest a, uh, a title or a uh, description. And so that's also sort of uh, searchable as well. So you can search against um, you know, all of this metadata, including the extracted metadata, which now has a dedicated button. So if you're used to using the extracted metadata exclusively and not necessarily doing much tagging, this is all available straight out of uh, you know, a dedicated window that pops up, which is really nice. Um, and this is the thing that you can do. You can, you know, really quickly and f easily find specific metadata. So if I'm looking for the Cachillo Consad, you know, location or whatever this was for this particular um, <clears throat> set of metadata in this clip, I can uh, jump right to that uh, very quickly and easily. So, uh, so that's our latest and greatest, um, you know, super duper HTML5 player. So, uh, so those. Uh, those are some things that you might want to check out in version 4.0. Another new feature of uh, version 4.0, which we think is going to be a, a great addition to everybody's workflows, is uh, the ability to archive either Adobe or Avid um, projects directly through uh, us parsing the project files of, of either of those applications. And so the way it works is you just go into the archive console and this is uh, going to be slightly different because it's going to be a ticketed archive and very similar to doing an AAF or XML or EDL uh, ticket-based archive. We're going to go and we're going to navigate for a, um, an AVB file. And the thing is, you don't have to export or do anything with that. It just has to be, we just have to be pointed to where an AVB uh, project file resides. Um, the, uh, the audio and video tracks and uh, all the associated media files do not have to reside in the same folder. So this is, this is kind of interesting is that you're just going to point us to where the project file is. The project file will tell us 
all the media files that are associated with the with the um, project, all the bins. It'll get broken down, and uh, and we'll be able to go and uh, find those and do the archive. So I'll t uh, pick Avid first here. Uh, a AVB uh, project file is the the thing that we're looking for, and I'll just navigate on my uh, workstation here to find where I put that uh, particular um, project file. Oops, wrong one. I want to go here, go to Avid, and I'll go to um, one of our samples that we received from a customer here. And um, you'll you'll see warnings when we um, basically convert this ticket because we don't have the media files associated, but if they were online and present, these would all be uh, green check marks. But you'll see <clears throat> the basic construct here is that the project is uh, has all of uh, various bins associated with it. So here's an online bin. It's got 853 items in it. Um, a uh, the final cut bin for this particular project. There's a, a guide bin. There's a you know a uh, graphics bin. Each one of these will be listed separately um, with the number of files and the ones that we found. And obviously, once again, I don't have those media files online, but you get the idea is that we're able to actually identify those. If I want to view the file listing um, for this particular bin, which is the uh, Battle of Britain graphics bin, um, this is where it's telling me these are, these files reside, right? So that's why we can't find them because they're on like a local C drive or whatever it may be. But um, we have the, the, the list of files is generated. Um, these are picked files and a couple uh, dot movie files um, that were used um, in this you know this project so same thing applies to all the all the bins um, one thing that we do as well which is kind of cool is we gather up all the actual physical project files um, that includes the bins um, the XMLs all the stuff that uh, is in the system and we actually gather those up into one nice little listing here as well and then those are archivable or, or backupable however you want to call it but the cool thing is is that you can automate this so the key here is that um, you can do you know end of project archiving with a single button push you know this single uh, this single you know push of a button to get this list and then you know run the entire job so that uh, you know your finished project can be archived and sent over to LTO and then you can purge that stuff from your uh, from your workstations or from your SAN or for your ISIS or whatever it may be or you can set this up to be automated. So you can do basically nightly backup um, snapshots of, um, of your project and all associated media files and everything else, all elements that go along with that project, including the project files themselves. So you can actually get a nightly backup of all that as a project might be you know, in progress. And that's a great uh, tool to be able to uh, you know, kind of have a DR copy of everything associated with a project as, as that project goes along day by day in case something catastrophic was to happen. Um, so you have that capability. Um, and so you know, those project files and everything else are going to be uh, you know, uh, incrementally archived. And that's the key, is that our, all of our archives and restores are incremental by default. So when you set up an automated job to run every single night and it you know, continually looks to these same uh, sources as its, uh, as its definition of what it's going to archive, we will go and look at those sources and see if there's any new files or, or uh, any change files uh, in that list and we'll um, make sure that we only archive what's been new or changed. Last but not least, with version 4.0, is some of the new uh, reporting uh, capabilities and statistics uh, monitoring that uh, we provide. And so in the Clients tab here, you can go over to Logging and Statistics. And you, first off, you can actually check uh, to see your system stats. So you can check um, you know, CPU times and memories and processes that are running. So as I click on that, um, it does take a, a couple minutes to load. Well, that was pretty quick, actually. That was nice. Um, so this gives you a graphical um, readout of uh, and snapshot of um, what's going on in your system. So you can go to a high point here, and you can select it, and you can choose uh, to see what uh, processes are happening. You know what devices might be connected at that time. Um, any kind of Ethernet uh, activity or details that uh, might be pertinent to. 
uh, you know, kind of seeing what's going on on your system. Um, current running processes um, are displayed, disk statistics, memory maps, swap space, CPU time. All these are available um, right from the UI now, so it's a single click. Go look at those. Um, we also have our logs um, being uh, revealed or available uh, basically through the GUI as well. What's really nice about this is that, um, you know, either for troubleshooting purposes or just to be able to come in and see what's going on with the system, it's much simpler. Our, our support guys will be using this um, going forward. They won't be uh, doing half as much, um, you know, command line, you know, sort of interrogation that they typically do. They'll be coming in here and they'll going in and looking at the logs. And for instance, if you do have a, uh, you know, a warning of any kind, you know, I've got a backups log. Uh, uh, warning here if I click on it it brings me straight into this display here that shows me the warning with it highlighted it says hey you know you're you don't have any backup of my catalog happening right now there's no USB stick that uh, I can write to so this is a great uh, a thing that um, will allow both end users our resellers and as well as in, uh, customers to be able to uh, you know really kind of pinpoint and identify exactly what might be going on on their system and so you can close that up and um, and we've got a couple other bells and whistles, but that's uh, really the highlights of, of version 4.0.